posted by Happy Watermelon 7220A. Am I the butthole for asking my daughter to cancel a work commitment? I'm a proud father of 324F, 18M and 16 female. I plan for everyone in the family to go out of town as a surprise, especially because things have been tough on us lately. I called my oldest daughter, Emma, and she said she couldn't make it because she had to babysit that weekend. Emma is a professional nanny and she now works full time for a family of two moms with two kids. I told her if she could please cancel the weekend and spend the day with us, but she said that she had promised the family she'd care for their kids and that they were going out of town for a getaway without kids. I'm kind of sad because they are very understanding and Emma could cancel and they'd be okay, but she does not want. She'd rather give them a vacation than spend time with us and I told her this. She said she loved her job and I was being an H for pushing this. Does it make me an H to want to spend time with my daughter? And now to the comments. Morgignon 125 commented. You the butthole. I get the appeal of a surprise, but your daughter is an adult with a job and you won't expect her to skip it at a drop of a hat. If you want her to join family trips, you need to let her know in advance so she can get the time off work in advance. I'm being able likes to add. It's worse than that. His statements and actions indicate he does not even respect her job you the butthole. Zero the hero 23 commented. Probably the type to say that generation never wants to work as well. Oh. Imothro commented. You the butthole. What is wrong with you? Your daughter is an adult with adult work commitments and can't just wander off on an impromptu trip because you feel like it. She'd rather give them a vacation and spend time with us and I told her this. This statement is abhorring false and yet strangely prophetic because you are doing absolutely everything in your power to ensure that your daughter does not want to spend time with you. Keep up the disrespect and you'll never see her again. A comment from I swear I used to be smart. I love the manipulative twist he puts at the end. Does it make me an age to want to spend time with my daughter? It's a guilt trip and a purposefully false statement of events. Like we're going to cue at him and tell him, of course not, it's so sweet. To the next post. Posted by Tainted Bows. Am I the butthole for firing my mother-in-law? Back four months ago, both my husband and I landed the same job, making fantastic pay. This job pays $28 an hour, so this was huge for us. The problem is that it's overnight shift, so we needed a sitter for the kids. We asked mother-in-law to do so. She said yes, and we told her to pick what she felt was a fair amount for payment. She said $300 in the three-day weeks and $400 in the four-day weeks. 12 air shifts. I will admit I was a bit thrown off with the price only because she didn't get here until after the kids all over 12 were already sleeping and left before they woke up so all she did was use her hot water, eat all our food and sleep. I didn't say anything because it's really law and iris and we needed someone. It turned to shit quick. Every work day we get out at 5.30 and have an HR drive home. She's blowing up our phones by 5.50 minutes 6 am asking where we are and telling us to hurry up. We get home to filth created by her because my kids are sleeping the whole time like garbage beside the chair slash sofa where she sleeps, dirty dishes everywhere, dog shit apparently she wasn't bringing the dog out and found she has been letting the dog sleep on our bed absolute big no no as well as feeding our dog table scraps I only know this because she all of a sudden begs constantly when she didn't before. Between me trying to manage this new sleeping schedule and me having to undo everything she did while here, I decided I couldn't do it. This was following her calling us out of work twice because her back hurt and she wanted to go home. So, I spoke to my husband and told him I wasn't paying her to watch our kids anymore because she is creating more problems than she is worth and that he needed to let her go. He agreed but he didn't want to hurt her feelings, so I told him I could do it. He decided it would be better if we both did so we called her on speaker and told her this wasn't working out. When she asked why, we were pretty blunt in our reasoning. She trashes the house, she eats everything in sight, even stuff we said don't touch. She does not follow our rules about the dog and she cost us almost $1,300 for having us leave work within an hour of being there because of her back. 
She starts yelling and saying she quit her job to do this. We had no idea she quit or why considering she didn't work the days we did and that we were heartless because this was her only income now. My husband was visibly uncomfortable, but we stood out ground. He's feeling some type of way because now he is questioning whether or not she was causing that many issues. He isn't seeing it the way I do, however, because he is not the one who deals with all the problems I am. I do the grocery shopping and have had to go several times more than I usually do after not sleeping. I'm the one who cleans, he does other chores. Am I the butthole? He feels terrible, I do not. Edda, minimum wage where I am is $7.25 an hour for those very few individuals who think that what I was paying her wasn't enough, it's above minimum wage. And now to the comments. A comment from Kronglas Order. I'll admit I was a bit thrown off with that price. You'll never get an overnight babysitter for $100 a night. At least not a sitter you trust with your kids' welfare. She trashes the house, jeez, everything inside, even stuff we said don't touch. She does not follow our rules about the dog and she cost us almost $1,300 for her having us leave work within an hour of being there because of her back. You can't trust this sitter with your kids. Not the butthole. Edit, I'm done with the regional difference in babysitter's pay discussion. Let's stay on target with the actual issue at hand, please. Original poster likes to add. Thankfully my sister has stepped in and I gladly pay her the same price I was giving mother-in-law despite my sister not wanting to get paid and there's absolutely no issues at all. I think the price was throwing me off with mother-in-law because of how much damage she was causing. Such a relief honestly. Prize mix 8272 likes to add. I'm a retired, qualified teacher and I would sit for 100 overnight. Not the butthole. Inolay commented. Not the butthole. $100 per night to babysit 13 and 14 year olds and be the adult present just in case something goes wrong. Han, for that price I'd also throw in organising school lunches, having breakfast ready for you when you get back and the house would be so tidy you wouldn't know I had been there. Original poster likes to add. See, after we fired her I hired on my younger sister and that's how things are now. I pay her the same amount of paid mother-in-law but I've been throwing in little bonuses and even buying her special snacks and stuff that I know she likes because I come home to a peaceful atmosphere. She even cleaned out my fridge the other day because she was bored. Of course my sister says I'm doing too much she didn't even want to get paid but holy hell is she worth it. To the next post. Posted by Zart Muckerberg 9009 Am I the butthole? For expecting people to pay their fair share. Every year my wife's family plans a beach trip. We usually require a large house for the almost 30 people that go. For some reason, the cost gets divided by family and not person, meaning that my wife and I, who have no kids, pay the same as her sister and brother-in-law, who have themselves and five children. Accommodations for this year's trip cost roughly $6,800, which, divided by eight families, is about $850. However, if it were divided by person, it would cost my wife and I only about $650. I brought this up to her and she's adamant that this is the way they've always done it, so this the way it is. So, am I the butt for not wanting to subsidize her sister's $2,300 vacation bill? Edit for clarity, the large families always get their own living space with restroom. Meanwhile, wife and I are stuck on an air mattress in someone else's room or living space. And now to the comments. Okie dokie, 134 likes to add. Not the butthole. It should be divided by bedroom. Families with kids who need more bedrooms pay more. Those who don't get a bedroom pay less. Much, much less. Honestly, you should start finding your own housing close to them. We need a thing bedroom is a perfectly good reason. Asterisk edited to include judgment. Tal Muskel likes to add. Participant is correct. Get your own accommodation close by. If you are on vacation, having your own room is a must. My wife would also say your own bathroom. Boeing 367 minus 80 commented. But the real issue here is Original Poster's wife. Apparently she is totally okay with the subsidy. Until Original Poster and his wife are on the same page, he is screwed. A comment from WGKN123. 
As far as I know, my family did this when I was a kid. I heard my parents talking about paying equal per family, but we are the most kids. However, my brothers and I slept on the floor, so I imagine it was per bedroom. I still feel a little guilty that I stopped going when asked to pay an equal share as an adult while still sleeping on the floor. On one hand, that's entirely unfair, but on the other hand, it would have been nice payback if they subsidised large families all these years. To the next post. Posted by LZMX Soul. Am I the butthole? For not going to my own birthday dinner. My birthday was yesterday and unfortunately my family and I weren't able to go out for dinner that same night since everyone had to work late. I said no biggie and asked my family if we could go out the next day to date and they all agreed. I made it clear to them that I wanted to go around 3 or 4 p.m. since my bedtime is 8 p.m. because I have to be up at 3 a.m. for work and they said okay. I got home from work at around 2.30 p.m. and realized my dad wasn't home so I gave him a call to see what's up. Turns out he picked up a job since he had nothing to do today. Mind you he works in landscaping so his little side job would take hours to complete. I reminded him of my birthday dinner and he said to reschedule for a later time since he wasn't close to finishing at all so we changed it to 6 p.m. 6 p.m. rolls around and he's still not home. 7 p.m. and still nothing. At this point I head to bed early, assuming the plans were off because he wasn't answering my texts. At around 8 or 8 p.m. I get woken up and told that everyone is now ready to go and they just have to wait on me to get ready. I tell them I don't want to go at this time for three reasons. 1. I should be in bed sleeping since I have to be up early. 2. My dad picked up a job knowing we had agreed to go early so I felt like he didn't respect the time we had agreed. 3. They didn't bother asking me if I still wanted to go, they just woke me up and told me to get ready. So now everyone's mad at me for throwing a tantrum and ruining dinner. Everyone was ganging up on me and calling me ridiculous when the restaurant is still open for two more hours so I ended up crying and going off to bed. Now I'm thinking maybe I should have sucked it up and gone anyway since they did get all dressed up only for me to say no so, am I the butthole? So what do you think? Share your opinions in the comments below. And now to the comments. To Sustercise2075 commented. Not the butthole. Wipe away your tears and go to sleep. Your family can enjoy the guilt party they've thrown themselves. Not your responsibility to make them feel better. Iwateverake commented. Right? Like, it was original poster's birthday dinner and they decided that original poster's schedule didn't matter for planning it. That is entitled for deciding he didn't have anything to do when he had his child's birthday party to go to. They are entitled for thinking original poster should give up on very necessary sleep because they can't keep their word. Original poster. In sorry your family is so disrespectful. It's truly hurtful, I'm sure, that they couldn't get it together for your birthday. They really need to learn how to appreciate you. Not the butthole. Don't lose sleep over it. Letter Tricks commented. Absolutely spot on. Not the butthole for all those reasons. Ironic when people having a tantrum accuse calm people of having tantrums. Original poster, the only thing you did wrong was to pick up your phone after going to sleep. Happy belated birthday from a stranger on the internet who wishes you well as you continue to uphold your very reasonable boundaries with very unreasonable people. WHOYMEMI likes to add. Not the butthole. You all agreed on a specific time and your family disregarded that. And since it's your birthday, you know who gets to make all the decisions on time, date and place. You do. I'm sorry your family are insufferable fools, original poster. And happy belated birthday. And don't let them say you threw a tantrum, that's so wrong. A comment from upstairs character 69. Not the butthole. Bro, like, your dad was so rude I didn't have anything to do today as if your birthday dinner didn't count as anything. You and all your right to get mad at them. You were clear as about why you needed to be before 8pm and they didn't respect that. Just a baby bear likes to add. Not the butthole. They were hours late. They missed your birthday dinner. Almost the RVN commented. We will come to your birthday dinner at a time that's convenient to us. You should disrupt your sleep to accommodate our work commitments. Not the butthole, it's your celebration. He told them you sleep at 8 and have to get up early. They shouldn't have woken you up demanding to go. They could have rescheduled. 
to the next post. Post it by no cough of 7,576. Am I the butthole for flipping off the internet after he changed what I was watching? My fiancé makes it an absolute habit to come to bed hours after I do and flip off whatever I'm watching on the TV and put on something he wants to watch. Within minutes of turning off my show he is passed out. I've raised this subject multiple times in the past and he always has the same answer as to why he is doing it. Your shows are acting stupid and negative. For background, I am in my fifth year of forensic science. I have another year before I get my master's but I already have a full-time job working hand-in-hand -hand with law enforcement on some high-profile cases. I know it sounds stupid but I cannot express how much I love my work. I have never been happier or more intrigued by any job I have ever had in the past. So, I have a tendency to watch things like cold case files or forensic files and it's not just because I enjoy them, but also because you can never learn too much in my field. These are not the only shows I watch but a lot of them do have to do with my line of work. I can understand him hating these shows. I found most guys absolutely hate them. But it's not just these shows. So, I tested it the other day because the night before he had pulled the same BS and changed my TV to something he wanted to watch instead and said he was tired of me watching the shit. So the next night I put on something that he likes how it's made. I wanted to see if he would change it, and lo and behold, he fucking did. Mind you, this is the show he always switches the TV to whenever he changes my shows. I just looked at him and asked why the Aki changed it this time I was actually really watching this show and super involved so I was even more angry and he just shrugged and put on hoarders. He never watches this show. So I went and shut off the internet, sat down on the couch and continued to watch the show on my phone. He came out asking what was wrong with the internet so I told him I shut it off and until he starts respecting me it will not be going back on. I pay the bill. He got angry and said I'm being ridiculous because he should be able to watch whatever he wants to when he comes to bed after playing video games for hours because I don't need to og the TV. If he asked to change it, it would be one thing. It's him being a disrespectful butt and just switching it when he sees I'm watching it that pisses me off and he knows that. Am I the butthole? Ada, a commenter, told me this might be important info to add here. My fiancé's father was a dirty cop and had a bunch of dirty cop friends and therefore it is completely stumped on his trust for police officers. He absolutely hates that I work hand in hand with law enforcement, but likes that I work in forensic science. This could be why he hates my shows. And now to the comments. A comment from under Thurstrillers. Not the butthole. But if my fiancé was repeatedly ending in activity I enjoy without asking me first and then calling that activity fucking stupid when I try to talk about it, he would not be my fiancé anymore. Do you really want to be treated like this for the rest of your life? Kaiser Shahid likes to add. There's something deeply off about what your fiancé is doing. Alarm Jellyfish with 155 commented. If it's not even a consistent theme in the shows, it's clearly about control. This is the biggest red flag of them all. An original poster mentioned she pays the internet. Curious about how their expenses are divided. Wondering if he even contributes his fair share. Upper Creeker in 101 likes to add. Every person here is thinking and saying this. Please give some thought to your future life with this insulting controlling joke. Wicked Angel Love commented. Not the butthole, this is the man you plan on marrying. A comment from original poster. I've been putting it off for three years, so maybe I subconsciously know something that I refuse to accept currently. A comment from person off paper. Your shows are acting stupid and negative. You're marrying the person who says this to you. Not the butthole. Midwest Normal commented. He's essentially saying that original poster is acting stupid and negative. To the next post. Posted by Logical Swimming 987. Am I the butthole for refusing to share my toolkit and then denying immediate service after an accident? I25 am work as both an in house and a mobile auto mechanic for a moderately sized garage. Like many other mechanics, one of the first things I had to do was buy my own tools as very few garages supply them. 
Rather than have two toolkits for in-house and mobile work, I decided to put together a single large but mobile one that cost $5,000 to make. Due to its price and connection to my bottom line, the kit is off limits to others. When it comes to why I am posting here, it all started over an all change I did with a roommate of mine five days ago. This roommate was Jared who despite being a plumber likes to do his own auto work. While working we were approached by our other roommate Asha 24 female. After seeing us working on the cars she asked if she could borrow my tools to do her tires. She explained how she watched a video and wanted to do it herself to save money. In the kindest way possible I told her no while explaining that I don't lend my tools to anyone. She didn't like this and started going off about how I'm lying with the only real reason being that I'm sexist against women. Luckily Jared stepped in and backed me up by telling her there is a difference between household tools and a professional's equipment. She didn't accept this and started cussing at us before storming off. The following day things took a drastic turn with her. While Jared and I were out she stole my tools and tried to do her tire changes. Long story short, we came back to the fire department block in the parking lot as she had ruptured her car's gas tank. In the aftermath of this, my response to her was simple. I told her that she was going to clean up her mess and that I won't be expediting her car's repairs. This is fine until she realized that it would be at least a month until she could be seen with the estimate being just over $1,500 excluding tow costs. Additionally, she also learned that insurance won't help her at all with this. This led to her demanding that I get her car seen immediately because she needs it for university and work. In response, I told her no and that not having her car serviced immediately is her punishment for stealing my tools. She didn't like this and complained to her friends who are alongside her all saying that I am at fault and I'm a huge bot. Am I the bot? And now to the comments. TGI Fagin commented. Oh my. Not the butthole at all, hear me? At all. What a stupid woman. She stole your stuff. He said no she didn't care. Tools are expensive. You need them for your trade and to be honest no one lends out their tools as they tend to walk away. Stand your ground original poster. Current read commented. Right. Even if they were a cheap toolkit from Walmart original poster would still have the right to say no. My dad had a saying if you got to borrow a tool for something that you know you will need to do more than once just buy it. Car maintenance is something that's needed to be done regularly she should have gone out and bought her own instead of relying on someone else's possessions. A comment from Sanguini Loham. The thief Fafo. Not the bottle. Edit to add, did she damage your tools? Because the cost of haircutting toolkits can be thousands of dollars. I know my hubby's friend is a mechanic and his stuff is way more expensive than mine. If your tools got damaged by her, she needs to pay for that as well. Sankey Snake commented. Not the butthole. Hetty, but I love it. You are not just not lending the tools to her, but no one. Fair treatment across the board and it is professional equipment. She clearly didn't know what she was doing. She needs to learn actions have consequences. Real Wandering Wizard likes to add. Not the butthole. It is completely standard for people in skilled trades to have firm rules about their tools. She is trying to have an opinion about something she is completely ignorant about on top of all of her other followers. And how did she rupture the gas tank on a tire change? That is all I have for you today. I hope you liked it. If you like this video, please consider liking and sharing. I wish you a great day.